All right, this is a painting and finishing video for a carving video that should have been posted already today. So if you'd like to take a look at that carving video first, go ahead. And then once you get done with that, you can come over here and we're going to paint one carving and we're going to finish the other one with black walnut Danish oil. And uh, I think you'll agree that they turned out pretty nice. Let's go ahead and jump into how we got to this point here. These are our guys and uh, we're going to carve these. Well, we already carved these. We're going to paint one and uh, stain the other. So for those of you who want to see what one looks like painted, I think we're going to paint this guy here up and, uh, well, no, actually we'll paint this guy here up and we'll do this guy here with, uh, some Danish oil. And there's a video I did on Danish oil. So you can watch that on how to do Danish oil. You'll see him finish, but you're not going to see me do that with him because you can watch the video on how to apply that. That's pretty simple, pretty easy. It's not hard to do. So that's what we're going to do with him. This guy though, we're going to paint. So that's what we're going to use to paint. I am going to uh, get my water out here. Ooh, so pardon me for making a little bit extra noise. These painting videos are a little bit more uh, freer, not as structured. So you have to bear with me. Get this paintbrush and a mop. I like using these mops for dry brushing. And this is a half inch oval mop by master's touch and it's very worn down i've got a new one to replace it i started to use and you can see it's much longer so it was it was a lot longer than what is new but uh it's worn down and it's become just perfect for dry brushing a brush you use to dry brush will just get ruined so keep that in mind for your dry brushing needs now for this guy here we're going to paint him and we're going to do blue for the robe um brown for the beard and we're going to go with gold for those little bars there on the on the mustache and some uh, of course beige for the for the face there now for this i never do one paint so when i say blue we're gonna go with midnight garden here from folk art and then some blue cotton to dry brush over it now you always want to have a darker color paint on the base and then a lighter color paint to go over the top and that's going to create the effect right now the effect is going to be that the the, the robe is going to appear more of the blue cotton because that's what's dry brushed on top. So keep that in mind, right? The way you dry brush on top is going to be what it looks like mostly, um, unless you dry brush really lightly and then you can have more of the bottom show and it'll be more the, the, the bottom that gives the impression. So the heavier you dry brush, the top gives the impression more, the lighter you dry brush, the bottom layer gives the impression more. Always when dry brushing, darker colors on the base, lighter colors on top. Okay. With that said, I'm gonna do the same thing on the beard. A dark color on the base, we're gonna go with this burnt umber for the base of the beard, and then this honeycomb kind of brown, dry brush on top, right? So that's gonna be for the beard. For the skin tone, we're gonna to use a little bit of warm beige, and we're gonna water that down. And uh, I'm gonna need my eyedropper. And then for those little decorative parts in the beads, we're gonna use some metallic 24 karat gold paint. I like having this for various things. That little metallic paint has a nice effect. Okay, so to start with, let's shake up this midnight garden. And we'll go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna get a glove out. I always like to keep one hand gloved when painting <clears throat> to keep all of uh, the paint off of my hands. And I usually keep a couple ripped up pieces of paper towel as well nearby for drying my brush on and for uh, wiping down. So just fold it in half and I keep two of them right here. And then, uh, yeah, we're gonna get down and dirty because most of this is all just gonna be pretty quick. The belt, I didn't talk about the belt. What am I gonna paint the belt? I could go with burnt umber for that or do I wanna go with a different color? Maybe he, I mean, he's a priest. Can he have a colorful belt? Could I give him maybe a, a light green belt? I think we could. We could give him a little, like a succulent colored for the belt. I think it'll work. Let's give that a shot. That, that won't clash too much with the blue. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna dip my mop here into that and then into the water. And we're gonna paint the whole thing here, the blue 
using the water to push it around. I'm not too concerned where all I get it. This is the base coat of something. Everything else is going to get painted after this. I like doing these base coat colors first. So I can really just slop it in there, slop it on there. And not to be too concerned about lines, about where I'm getting paint, where I'm not getting paint. I should have been easier to not get it on the face, but whatever. Like I said, you got to be too gentle on this part. Cover the whole thing. By thinking, oh my God, how on earth can he paint like this? This is terrible. I know, I get it. I get it. Not terrible though. It's just uh, the way I paint. Painting doesn't have to be as meticulous as a lot of people think it needs to be. You don't need to go that crazy with it. But if we give everything a nice solid base coat of one color, it's easier to keep colors consistent across. You feel me? So, the whole thing, all one base coat color. And you don't have to do it this way. This just is really easy for me. Makes it far easier to get things done. Now, I'm going to take the hair dryer and I'm going to dry this up to it's dry to the touch so I can go ahead and go to the next part. All right, there we go. He is dry to the touch now. And we've got that nice, what, that midnight blue? Is that what it was? Yeah, midnight garden. All right, so Midnight Garden, dry brush. You see, you still see the wood grain through it, through there, so it still looks nice and pretty like that. Now, we're going to do the uh, the burnt umber on the beard. And be a little more careful here because we only want to get burnt umber on the beard. So we're not going to be going as crazy as we were with that big mop. We'll use a smaller brush. This is just a, <laughs> a hobby store pack. And there's no brand even on it, and it's just a simple, tiny little paintbrush, maybe a quarter of an inch long and all i'm going to do is work on getting that beard burnt umber just doing that and trying not to get onto the rest of the robe while i do it so that, that first coat with the blue we went wild and crazy and now we're trying not to be wild and crazy And you could do uh, gray for the beard. So you don't like brown. Don't do brown then. Do gray. Do whatever colors you like. Just remember that when you're dry brushing, you want to have a darker color in the base and then a lighter color dry brush across the top. So if I was going to do a gray beard, I would do a dark gray and I'd dry brush white. And the more white that you dry brush with, the whiter the beard will appear. The less white you use, the grayer the beard will appear. So I would use a very dark gray and then dry brush that white right along the top and it would look pretty neat. Very good. Definitely a look you can do. I think this guy's gonna look pretty neat painted. I do. Hope you guys do too. My goal here is not just to show you one finishing method, but show you multiple at a time, right? Because that Danish oil I love the look of, but sometimes you want a more colorful figure. And if you get good at painting, you can really make stuff that you love. But the only way to get good at painting is to spend time painting got to invest time in improving the skill like all the other skills just like carving if you don't you'll never get good at it. you'll never enjoy it and while I do enjoy painting it's not always I like to experiment and like certain figures look really great painted but not all of them do what am I saying here <laughs> I'm saying get better at painting and it's not so bad you'll enjoy it more when you're good at it 
when you when you can get something that 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 looks good you will enjoy the process far more than you do if you're not very good at it and you don't like the look of what you're making okay so hair, hair drying time and uh back this second okay that is all dry dry to the touch looking good brown beard get some warm beige there on the skin for skin tone like so and like i said warm beige all right and let's clean out this brush here that's pretty clean warm beige and i'm not going to water this down at all because i need or want i should say the skin tone Hide that blue underneath and to pop a bit. This can tell make it a second coat. I should have kept the blue off of the face, probably. But say la vie. Bring it up underneath that cheek. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'd like to take a moment too to show you a video from our sponsor, me. So take a look at this video real quick. And welcome back. Remember, you don't have to take part in that if you don't want to, but if you would like to help out, you absolutely can. And it definitely helps me out because I'm looking to get a new microphone. The microphone I got sits on the table. And every time I bump the table, you can hear it. And so I have to go back in and try to edit that noise out if I can but if there's voice going on at the same time it becomes very difficult to get that audio fixed right and uh, they make a lavalier microphone which is one that connects to your lapel that uh, I'd like to get the stuff I do but that's like a hundred dollar microphone it'd be significantly better audio I'd like to do that because this is fun for me I like doing these videos, so I'm probably going to keep doing them for a long time. And just uh, see where it takes me. Okay, so uh, that's coming together pretty well. I like it. I'm going to dry this off again with the uh, hair dryer. So, pardon me for a moment. Okay, so there we go. We got that all dried at the touch now, and that's doing great. So, we're going to do that gold on there last. So, let's look at doing... Uh, we're going to do that color last, too. Let's look at dry brushing the rest of the robe out. And we're going to use, like I said, blue cotton. A very light color. Which is going to put a little bit of texture to this guy. Now, I need to clean out this brush. Because you can see, like, it's got a lot of that dark blue in it still, right? So, we're going to... Wet it down and wipe it clean as best we can so we get most of it out of there. And I'm turning the brush different directions to clean it out as best I can. And you can see when I get some directions, it starts to come out a little more. I think that's pretty good right there. Okay. Now, I'm just drying the brush now. Outside of it too, the drier the brush is, the less wet it is, the better off we are. Okay, I got some more blue pushed out of there. We get all that color out of it we can. We get as dry to the touch as we possibly can. Still a little cool, a little damp. I am not gentle with my dry brushing brush. I'm not kind to it. This is a, <laughs> a difficult process for a brush. This poor thing has been mistreated and abused. Okay, now for dry brushing, I go over this every time, but I'll go over a little more right now too. Fill the brush up with paint, and then concentric circles working your way out to get most of that paint out and push it in deep into the bristles, right? 
and then we're just wiping it down so we get most of it off the brush and we do it till we get to about this consistency see how there's barely anything getting left behind right there on that right there that's what we're going for and then we just lightly touch the surface of the carving And doing this, pulling it along like this, you can see how it uh, really highlights all the facets of the cuts. And I love that effect. I love that effect so much. So we're just gonna do that. Keep bringing it down. Push a little bit harder. We wanna get a little bit more of that light blue out. Right? And I want it to be, I want this shade people see to be a little bit lighter than the blue that's underneath, but not as light as the blue that we're dry brushing it on with. Right? So we're gonna push a little bit. Put a little bit more into there. Get in those crevices as best you can all the way around. And you can see that color starting to come out, right? And we're going to diffuse this with shadowing when we get to that point. And then we're going to take it outside and we're going to antique it. And I'm going to show you that as well. So we'll go through the whole process with this guy. So you can see my whole process. I think that we about have the blue dry brush done. So let's kind of frost it right now, doesn't he? Right? It's too bright. We're going to diffuse that. It's okay. This is not the finished product, right? That beard is way too brown. The skin tone is way too beige. And the body, like this, is way too bright. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We're still working on this. Now, let's do the beard dry brushing. Oh, pay my finger. Do the beard dry brushing and we're going to use that honeycomb. If my kids were here, there'd be so many fart jokes right now. I don't know if you could hear that thing squirting out of there, but it was making fart noises. They would be laughing and rolling around the floor right now. My kids are uh, 8, 9, and 10. Fantastic children. I do think I'm going to keep them, but uh, <laughs> they're still quite young. So I make a lot of fart jokes whenever I'm interacting with them because that's how dad gets the easy win. <laughs> Fart jokes are funny. So it is a, uh, it's a lot of fun being a dad. I have, uh, it's probably the best thing I ever did with my time. Other than marrying my wife, I have married a very lovely lady. If you follow me on Facebook or Instagram or threads, you've probably seen me post about her recently on her anniversary because it's been, uh, 13 years of marriage 13 years is a long time to be married to one person and uh, I'm just very grateful and thankful for the partner that I have Speaking of uh, social media Go over and connect with me on Instagram. Come follow me. Check me out. Let me check you out too. show me your work that way we can see each other's work and uh, help each other out Help each other grow Interact with each other this whole thing is a lot better, a lot easier, a lot more enjoyable when you have people to interact with on it. So uh, get over there, connect with me, connect with the rest of the, of the Instagram carving community. There are a lot of people out there enjoying this hobby the same way you are, and it is fantastic. So do that for yourself. Don't, don't avoid that. Look at that, huh? It's not too much lighter. Those crevices are all that dark, burnt umber still. That is just, we're dry brushing it's a little bit heavier. We just can't get in those cracks and crevices. I think that's going to be a really neat effect. I think that's great. Okay. We got that dry brush. Things we have left to paint are the belt and those bars on there. So let's do the, uh, the belt, that succulent color. I'm 
for this, I'm going to get out a uh, detail brush to make it a little bit easier on myself. So this is a pack of detail brushes I got off of uh, Amazon Cocoa Land. And it's just a uh, little fine tips, you know. We're doing something like this belt. That does make it a bit easier on me. And now you might be saying, oh, I can see why it shows that color. All right, that's the dry brushing. It's gonna kind of go well with the color we got going on here. See? I do know what I'm doing sometimes. Not all the time. Just a good sometimes. And I'll tell you this, there are people that are way better at painting than I am. I am just learning. But I am trying purposefully to show what I'm learning, what I've learned as I go. Not everybody is. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I get it. But uh, it's hard to find all this information, especially like for painting carvings. I have watched videos on painting miniatures, acrylic painting for like portraits, like, like on a canvas, all kinds of stuff, trying to learn as much as I can to improve my painting and my carvings because like so many carvings need to be painted. They just call for it. Getting good at this, it's difficult. There's not that many great places to learn. And there are places you can pay money for to, to go learn, but some of these hobbies you don't really wanna pay money for, right? I don't have all the money in the world. I've got a wife and three kids. And while my wife does work, three kids will eat you out of house and home so fast it will blow your mind. Every day they're demanding new things like shoes and protein. It's like, kids, I fed you just last week. I remember. But then they tell you they, they get fed every week. Like, pff, every week? Who are you? Queen of Sheba? I mean, you get fed every week. And then they, then they tell you they got a birthday coming up. It's like, no, I distinctly remember you had a birthday last year. And then they say they get a birthday every year. Right? It's just greed, I tell you. Greed. A birthday every year? What's next? There we go. So there's the belt, right? Just a little bit different in color. And uh, it goes well with that robe. So clean that up. And we'll get out our, our gold. And we'll paint up those two gold things in front. We're not getting a lot of gold paint. Let's clean up that. The nice thing about detail brushes is it doesn't take much to clean them up. But something small like this make sure you get it dry because if it comes in there with a little bit of water in there it'll run real quick and we don't want it to run this is a very small area so put a little gold in his beard There we go. Oh, yeah, that's gonna look pretty neat, isn't it? Dwarves are always sitting on a big trove of gold, digging in the ground. They got access to the best gold around. So a dwarven priest like this, he's gonna display that right large gold ingots in his beard. Makes sense. Makes sense to me. Side. There we go. So we've got him all finished up for painting. Next up is antiquing. So let's go outside and take a look at that. 
this antiquing solution is uh, made up of boiled linseed oil, some paint, some other stuff. I got a whole video on the recipe, how to make it, whatnot, and how I use it. But, but the gist of it is this. I'm just going to drop the carving in here after stirring it thoroughly. And I'm stir it just for a few moments. And then after it soaks in there for a moment, I'm going to pull them right back out and wipe them down. And the BLO in this case is mostly a method for delivering uh, some umber paste paint to all the cracks and crevices. And there's some uh, Danish oil in there as well that will get into the paint itself and just weather him and make him look you know, kind of neat. I like the, the effect of it. And because it's got BLO in it, it's still going to do that polymerization which will harden the wood and protect the carving over the long term. So it's got that effect as well. And uh, I'm just going to wipe them clean here. And as you can see, it kind of brings out a, a deepness to that color there on the top of the, the robe and shoulders. And it puts some more darkness into the beard and just uh, it really sets the carving apart more than it was before. And it's just a, a fantastic effect. And I highly suggest that maybe you uh, look into using this as well in your own carvings. Okay, so as you can see, we got that antiquing solution applied. And he looks absolutely fantastic. So we're done for him. He just needs to dry on that. But since we're doing a painting video already, I figured why not? I'll just go ahead and show you in this one how I do that. Danish oil, real quick. So this is black walnut Danish oil inside of this container. And of course he didn't fit in there. <laughs> so because he didn't fit in there, I will use a pipe cleaner to dip down in there. And then put it right on the surface of him. This is a messy process. It's not clean, but the effects are fun. I like the way these guys look with the Danish oil. I really do. Which is why I want to do one of them one way, one of them painted to give people options. Let them see what all you can do, right? You don't have to just do one thing. And some folks too watching this, they might not want to finish with Danish oil. They might want to paint or they might want to, uh, you know, do Danish oil rather than powder. I just want to give people options. Have you see both ways. That way you know exactly what your options are and you can do whatever it is that you want to do. And this guy with the beard, I think looks really good with the Danish oil. I think I got a little paint on him right there, which is, downright sad but I can fix like so just carve a little bit of that off and then right back in with the dash oil okay after I get that done I don't want it to sit there I wipe it off immediately. No reason to wait. Don't need to give it time. Oh, look at that, huh? Very Scandinavian style figure I mean that's just <laughs> I love the look of that I really do now I kind of wish I would have to the day show to both of them that's okay it's all right I got one of them this way one of them that way very fun like I said I want to give people options for what they could do and I want to show that you don't just have to do day show you can paint now you've seen that now you know both those options are options you've got Alrighty, this guy now will need wax. Wax is very easy. I'm just going to get some paste, natural finishing wax, and 
apply it with a toothbrush and then buff it off with a, a uh, buffing brush that I've got that is devoted to just that cause. All that buffing brush does is works on wax with dash oil. It does nothing else. It's taking a while because I'm going to heat this up and melt this wax. So give me a moment and wax directly onto the carving. The end grain, make sure you get it in there pretty good. It uh, definitely needs to seep into there. The nice thing about this wax too is that it's really great for if it's going to get handled a lot. Let's see if making chess pieces or something like that. This wax works really great for that because you can easily clean them back up with just a quick buff of a buffing brush. I'm getting that wax down to those end grains on the bottom too will seal up the carving just fantastically. That will be out of the camera. So he's very heavy waxed. It's all gooped up in there and every surface I could possibly get it to. Now I'm going to wipe a good bit off and on, off of the carving and into the carving kind of as best I can because you want it to get pushed into the wood, right? So rub it in real good. And then we can buff it off with a brush dedicated to this purpose because don't use that brush, that brush or anything else because it has wax and dish oil in it now and so it will leave a mark. It will leave that uh, stain on regular wood if you do that. You will have gotten wax too into cracks and crevices that you can't get it out of. That's okay. Take a hair dryer and heat it up and then you'll be able to melt that wax a little bit more into the surface and come back to it. And look at that effect, look at that. I love the way those cut of show, just like dry brushing, you can use this wax and buff it and buff it and buff it and get that gorgeous luster in the wood. And a lot of people say that basswood doesn't do well finishing with stain. It doesn't do well finishing like this and that. This is basswood. This is basswood. And it does just fine with the proper finish. I mean, it's just, it can look really great. I don't know what they're saying. And I don't think I'm going to need to take a hair dryer to this one. I think that uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, I don't see a problem at all. All right, folks, that's it. Thank you so much. See you next time. If this video has provided any kind of value to you whatsoever, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and motivates me to keep making more. And uh, I'm really enjoying this video thing. So, uh, yeah, I want to keep making more. Head over to Instagram, give me a like and a follow there as well, and uh, Facebook, check out my socials, and uh, you're going to see some other videos popping up on the screen. Don't forget to give those a watch as well. And uh, I hope you guys have a great week. Take care of yourselves. And uh, don't forget to go to Etsy and buy a sticker.